was like our second to last conversation. She mentioned like a fling with Corey, and I was kind of blindsided by that. I was like, hold up. <laughs> we were all blindsided. Yeah, and it didn't make much sense to me because they Hi guys, welcome back to the Shannon Show. Hello, if you're new, so today I have a special guest with me, Cam from Love Island USA season three. Um, he was a part of the Casa Amor Boys, and obviously, you know how it is, we're gonna get into it. We only see an hour a day, so hopefully Cameron is gonna give us his side of the story and we can see things from your point of view or maybe get to know things that we didn't know. Definitely. Nice to meet everybody. So obviously Casa Amor is a very risky time to come in um, as a contestant. When you got the call that you were going through to Casa Amor, were you confident that you could become a permanent resident? So with me coming into Casa Amor um, and in general, I'm a very confident young man. So, you know, coming in there, I was like, that's a perfect setting in the sense of you're just with the girls. So, you know, that allows you to devote your time to them and them to devote their time to you. Um, so coming in, I was excited. I felt like I had good odds. And obviously we saw, we kind of narrowed in, well, really on Olivia, but Kira was an option as well. From my point of view, Kira seems devoted to Will, like she wants to marry Will. Did you really <laughs> think that it, you would be able to penetrate her feelings? I mean, I think, to be honest, that first initial conversation I had with her was great. Um, a lot of the guys didn't think she would even be that open. So when I had that conversation with her, it was like, wow, okay, so she is trying to be open with me. Um, and then, like, obviously watching my at the clips, like, I saw her go inside, like, with the girls. Um, she was just like, you guys are going to love him. And then she got emotional. She was just like, if I wasn't with Will, he'd be a perfect candidate. So it's like I definitely left my, like, a lasting mark and lasting impact on her. Um, but at the end of the day, she was, you know, pretty – pretty tied to Will um, and wasn't really trying to budge too much. And I, I figured that out pretty quickly once I was in the villa. I mean, the Casa more rather. And that's when I shifted my main focus to a little. It seems like the public have kind of turned their opinion of Kira yeah. and Will being together because of what went down in Casa or more. Do you think Kira deserves better? I do. Um, I feel like it's hard because she was so loyal and so 110% into Will that when he turned his head or wandered a little bit, it was blown up even more. Um, and I'm sure it was a great guy. You know, I have nothing against him at all. Um, and I think that they are a great fit. But the fact that the matter that they were so closed off with each other makes all this situation, you know, a bigger issue. Because he took care of her. He's a great guy. And I, I think he, did, he does deserve her. But from this specific situation with the type of guy it seems like she wants, I think she deserves better in the sense of she needs somebody that's like completely all her. And granted, he slipped up once. You know, we're all human and make mistakes. But I feel like either there was some dialogue that wasn't, you know, communicated about, you know, what they can do and what they can't do. But she was literally closed off. Like she had conversations with the guys. But she refused. It was all will, 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 will on the brain. So it does suck that, you know, he did. Do it, you know what I mean? He had a little slip up and it's been blown out of proportion. But I think that from America's view, them being so perfect, when they make one mistake, it's yeah, it kind of everything kind of falls apart from there. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you can you can always work it out because Josh worked out, you know, their past issues that they had. So I wouldn't necessarily say she deserves a better guy, she deserves probably better from Will because yeah. she does love, you know what I mean, you know, and that's wrong word but i feel like she definitely feels that for him yeah so, the behavior is looking like she does love him <laughs> yeah exactly it's easy for you to say she deserves better um so i could say yeah she does deserve better or if i got more specific i'd say she deserves a better version of will right now mm. um what was it about olivia that made you want to pursue her so with olivia it was just the fact that she was able to show me two sides so me being 25 and Olivia being 29, there is, you know, a little age gap between us. Um, and obviously, with that being said, a 25-year-old and a 29-year-old can be at two totally different stages of life. Um, but what attracted me to her was the fact that she had that flair and that, that young, exciting energy to her, but was also able to transition to that mature side as well. So being able to transition between the two was definitely very appealing for me because it's like, I could have came in there and she could be thinking, you know, marriage, kids, settling down. But she was able to, you know, kind of find that happy medium at the time and be able to, you know, come down to the younger side, but then also bring it back up. And then I myself, you know, feel like I can, you know, teeter between both as well, even though I'm a younger guy. So I feel like that definitely drew me to her. Um, and then 
we kind of took it from there. Conversation kind of flowed from that point on. Was her being like the only proper single one there a factor as well? I think going in there, um, that didn't have a huge effect because the other three weren't initially on my list anyways. So it just happened to work out that, you know, Olivia was one of the single ones. Kira was the only other one that was with somebody. Um, so I think that's just kind of how the, you know, the luck of the draw was. Um, but Shannon, Trina, um, and Cash are all great. I love them to death. Uh, they were a great time when I was there. They showed me nothing but love. Um, I loved all the girls. The girls, you know, they said they all loved me. So I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of luck of the draw that Olivia happened to be, you know, on my list and happened to be single. Um, cause I could have went in there and had two situations that were very Kira esque and that would have just made it really tough for me. Um, but it did make it smoother being that one of them was taken and one of them wasn't. So it's like, I had kind of like both worlds to kind of experience while I was in there. You kind of progressed things with Olivia. Olivia seemed interested and at first it was looking like she was going to bring you in but then yeah. the conversation kind of shifted and it was kind of like she wasn't sure if she was going to bring anyone in yeah how did you feel about it when it switched that way so coming in there olivia was very clear that this was an experience for her you know what i mean she wanted to make a decision for her and i i backed her up with that um as you guys saw you know i never wanted to make her feel pressured to bring me in but i did feel at some point there was a switch, um, definitely, like, whether it was just she just had a lot on her mind. I know she'd been through a lot um, experience-wise with, like, other guys. So it was, like, we took 10 steps forward. And then by the time the last conversation, I feel like we took, like, five back. Um, so I was really 50-50 going into elimination um, about whether, you know, she would take me in or not. But I definitely felt, like, bits of indecisiveness um, in her. And then she also kind of randomly at the end um, mentioned Corey. It was like our second to last conversation. She mentioned like a fling with Corey, and I was kind of blindsided by that. I don't know. She mentioned <laughs> We were all and blindsided. Was, yeah, and it didn't make much sense to me because there was no video of that. There was no conversation that that was never brought up. So I was just kind of like, where'd that come from? And then when she started bringing that up, I felt like that was the point where she was trying to shift her focus a bit, but didn't want to hurt me. So at that point, I started to feel like, okay, I might be getting, you know, let on a bit, you know, and whether that was her intention or not, I was just kind of like, you just dropped the bomb on me about Corey and now your head's spinning. So it's like, I have no idea where you're at, but I was just like, at the end of the day, I'm going to be me. I'm going to be genuine me um, and support you no matter what. It's like, I want you to make the best decision for you. Um, but I did feel like from previous episodes, I definitely could have been brought in as a friend. You know, she could even brought me in to strictly platonic and gave me the opportunity you know, to possibly try to, you know, build something with her or pursue another girl in the villa. So that was really the only thing that kind of like was, you know, a bummer at the end. Cause I'm like, you guys have been saving on a friendship level throughout the whole show. So I feel like I deserve, you know, and, and earn that, that right to at least be able to go in there and see what I can pursue on my own. Mm. So obviously we did see that you were uh, like how you said you, you weren't putting pressure on her. We saw that. Um, but is there a part of you or was there a part of you in your head that just, was there a voice in your head saying, just ask her to bring you in as a friend? Part of me did, um, but at the end of the day, I didn't want it to look like I'm one of those guys that are like, oh my God, I have to get in the villa. You know what I mean? I wanted to get in the villa because she wanted me in the villa. So I feel like if I asked her to be a, you know, be your friend and go in the villa, that would have been still a, a mode of pressure. You know what I mean? And I wanted to be my authentic self. So I feel like it wasn't my, my place to be like, hey, Olivia, you know, you want to bring me in as a friend? Even though I think that that would have been a very, like, viable option, you know what I mean? Because I would have gotten there, she could let everybody know that. And then let's say I, you know, reconnect with another girl in there, and she's, she thinks, oh, okay, actually, I, do my, I might like it. So then it gave us the opportunity to possibly build something, but also gave me the opportunity to possibly pursue somebody else. Um, so, like, when Cash brought Charlie, we were hoping to get at least, at least another one of us in. They were thinking it was going to be me and Charlie. For sure, but it ended up just being Charlie. But I'm glad he got in. You know, we wanted to get at least one of the cast crew members in the, into the villa. As Olivia, she didn't bring anyone in as a friend. Do you feel like she kind of took an opportunity away from someone? 100, percent 100, percent and that's kind of like what was that was probably the main thing that I, you know, you harp on a little bit. Um, I'm glad you've gotten over it now, but it's just like just seeing the episodes go on and on. You're like, bruh. You could have brought me, you know what I mean? You could have brought me in there. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, you don't want to harp on it a lot, but at the same time, it's like, 
the friendship, you know, the friendship kind of trend that they had going on, saving people um, that they wanted to stay there was very common. So it wasn't like it would have been out of the ordinary for me to ask for that or for that to happen. So I did feel like I did, you know, lose the opportunity to get in the villa. Um, and that was like a general consensus. Everybody, you know, on the outside mm. looked in pretty much felt the same way. They were like, yeah, I like, felt that way as robbed well. Robbed of it. You know what I mean? And I think that that more than anything was what got me. It wasn't the fact that she wasn't quote unquote into me as much as we all thought she was. It was the fact that it's like, you know what? The girls love him. He's a great vibe, great guy. Let me bring him in here, see if he can build something with somebody else, or maybe we might rekindle. You know what I mean? So that's where my head was more than anything, but I guess she didn't really see eye to eye with that. Um, and then at the end, she she was honest. She said she didn't want to bring me into a toxic situation. So I guess me being there with her possibly pursuing Corey and just not knowing what she wanted to do, she didn't want to bring me in there. But as a young man, I'm competitive. You know what I mean? It's like I would have been fine in there. I would have adjusted. I would have, you know, acted accordingly and, you know, been able to pivot and kind of make my, my way around there. But... You know, at the end of the day, it was her decision. So do you buy that justification that she gave, that she didn't want to bring you into a toxic situation? Yes and no, I'd say. Uh, part of me feels like I didn't really get a clear answer in regards to all those conversations we had, you know, that were built up. I felt like we were making progress. But by the time that, you know, Casa More ended, I feel like we had def we had digressed a bit. But there was things that, are, that were left unsaid. I never got to have that full conversation with her because at the end, you know, we hugged them. She let me know, like I just told you, you know, she didn't want to bring me to a toxic situation that she was sorry. But I never had like a sit down with her like this to be able to, you know, kind of mm. express, you know, how I felt, have her express how she felt and get a true, like definitive answer and closure. Um, so more than anything, I feel like I wanted, wanted that direct answer. Um, and I wanted to know if that was her decision a group decision with the girls or a mix of both too, you know, cause I know that the girls were talking to her and she had a lot going on. So I don't blame her, but I definitely feel like that answer was, you know, the generic one in the moment. Um, mm. So I feel like there's, there's some truth to it. And there's probably some kind of buttered up substance behind it too. So I kind of sit in the middle of it. So going back to Corey, obviously I feel like the public as well, were a bit blindsided by that as well. Do you think that's genuine, her connection, her newfound connection with Corey or simmering connection with Corey? Personally, I can't say that, you know, it is genuine, but I can't say it isn't either. So I just would probably say I'm undecided. Um, the reason I would lean to it not being genuine would be because of the fact that nobody was aware of it. It kind of came out the blue. So it was, it was one of those situations where he's been a friend of all the girls in there. Um, and from the beginning, nobody's really pursued him out of the OG girls that are there. So it kind of was confusing that that kind of came out the woodworks to all of a sudden fall for him and, you know, him be your main guy. Um, but at the end of the day, I am not in the villa. So, you know, I'm not around her on a day to day basis with Corey. So that's why, you know, I won't I won't say it's not genuine. It's like kind of, again, sit in the middle of, you know, you got to kind of let things run its course. Um, cause I don't know. I don't know him personally. You know, I wish I wish her the best. I wish him the best. But it was just very random and, and completely blindsided. So it was like, is that a thing or are you guys making that a thing? You know mm. what I mean? Because single. And then also Corey had a very, very, you know, <laughs> heartbroken situation with Florida. Mm. So knowing that Florida was in there still, I feel like that connection wouldn't have been there. So things like that, yeah. you start running through your mind with different scenarios and stuff. And you're like, I'm not sure if that's it, but, you know, I'll let time, only time will tell with that. And in terms of providing, like, insight of the goings on inside... Um, you were in Casa Amor, right? Or, Correct. Yeah. So obviously Charlie was successful in getting in with Cash. With Cash, I feel like there's always this thing going around is if people are choosing her because she's popular. Do you think Charlie has a genuine interest in Cash? I do. From the moment we came in there, Charlie made it clear that he wanted Cash. And I think that that, you know, mutual interest was reciprocated you know they were all over each other in Casa Moore, so they looked like lovebirds for sure um I think that the only issue with Charlie going in there was the fact that he knew Seiko was still very prominent um so I think that that was something that he didn't necessarily want to harp on but I feel like that's really the monkey wrench in their relationship that would either make or break them um but I feel like going in there he was all cash he still is all cash, um, but Cinco being in there just, you know, makes things complicated. You know what I mean? And she has, she had a situation with him, so it's like, at the end of the day, 
both are great guys. You know what I mean? I've never met Cinco in person, but I'm sure he's a great guy. You know what I mean? And I felt for him too because he was in a situation where he had feelings towards two different girls. And it's, it's hard when you're in the, the heat of the moment. Um, so I don't blame him at all. And I don't blame her. And she was honest with him. She let him know that she still had for Cinco. Um, so I think that overall, Charlie has, you know, great intentions for her. It's just kind of like he probably has a little bit of uneasy feelings of not knowing if she's truly all in for him. Or she was kind of in a honeymoon phase for that, you know, brief time we were in Casa Amor. And in terms of like the edits that we saw of both of the Casa Amor villas, seems like the boys edit, we kind of saw more of their mess. While as with the girls, they all seemed pretty well behaved. Was the edit a fair judgment? Yeah, the that was the biggest thing um, that the Casa boys, Casa crew rather, uh, felt in cost a more that the girls were you know a lot more reserved so like for example we all slept in the same beds like the guys they wouldn't sleep with the girls one time uh, meanwhile in the villa it was a totally different deal uh, so Lily's like a t- uh, um, two tails two different tails in there uh, and the girls were cool like but the challenges and stuff they were interactive and stuff like that but when it came to like the true like nitty-gritty of like getting really to know these men on the intimate, us men on the intimate level, that's kind of where they were standoffish. The only two that were open were, were Olivia and Cash. But aside from that, the girls really kept it very basic and platonic. Um, it didn't really show a lot of interest in, you know, taking things past there, which, you know, was frustrating coming into Costa more because you want to be able to build a, a relationship and some rapport with them. Um, so I feel like as the guys, that was one thing we wish, you know, would have changed, you know, them being more open to the experience than they were. Um, it would have been a lot more, you know, a lot more going on in there than uh, than people probably saw. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, it was just kind of we we drew that card and we made the best of it. Even though the girls were reserved, it seems like it was only really you, Charlie. Sometimes I think his name is Raul, 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 Raul. Raul. Um, kind of making an effort with the other boys. It kind of seemed like after day one. They were just enjoying the holiday. Do you feel like some people could have been a bit more active than they were? I think we all did a good job in there. Um, From the outside looking in, for example, like with Gabe and Andrew, they were both pursuing Shannon. And Shannon, you know, was more on the reserve side as far as like getting past the friendship part. So I feel like it came to a point in time where they kind of read the writing on the wall and kind of pulled back a little bit. Um, So I think that might have been what you guys uh, were seeing or getting that vibe. But that was more so because that was their main option and that's who they were going for. And then she kind of, you know, kind of let them know that it wasn't that wasn't it. From the outside looking in, I, I, I think you'd probably say that, yeah, us three, you know, kind of grabbed grabbed the main <laughs> the reins and, and took it and took over. But, you know, Andrew and Gabe definitely had their fair share of, of fun, too. And in terms of your relationships with the girls that you met in Casa Amor, was there anyone who's... Like, before going in, you had this preconceived notion about them, but then after meeting them, it totally changed that. I would say that, for example, Shannon, her vibe is is great. Um, from the outside looking in, like, yeah, you could you, you might think she's reserved, you know, or, <laughs> or like a drama queen and stuff <laughs> like that. But definitely was very down to earth. When I got to actually talk to her um, and have conversations, she was great. Um, and then she also, she does live nearby um, in Philly. And after we finished up, like, with the elimination and stuff, she was like, yeah, we definitely have to hang out. Um, so she was a lot more down to earth you know, than, you know, most people would think. And then Cash is the life of the party. Like, Cash is lively and a great vibe on TV, but when you're actually in person with her, it's even better. So it's like, I'm like, wow, she just one-upped the views that I that I thought I, you know. Yeah, she, she seems like a good time. Yeah, she's very, 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 very active she kept like the pulse of the house like going up aside from the guys say those two um were the main ones that you know boosted i guess you know my viewpoint of them when i were when i was in there who are you rooting for currently i have to root for my boy charlie you know that's my casa crew bro um aside from him i'd say shannon and josh Mm. i would be behind him um so either of those two you know i'd be i'd be happy with them um but I guess you could say I'm a little biased because that's my Casa crew, bro. But, you know, I hope Charlie goes to the end, gets it done with cash, and then takes care of it. Um, but if not, yeah, if Shannon and Josh take care of it too, I don't, you know, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be upset with that outcome either. Well, okay, that's my end of my line of questioning today. Thank you so much. See ya. Bye. Have a good one. Bye-bye.